right, everyone, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. It's day two of training camp, July 29th. We were in full swing yesterday. We had some interesting stuff going on with Kelvin Benjamin. I also wanted to talk in, uh, about some of what they refer to as the standouts at camp. And I want to I want to briefly touch on Deshaun Watson, because I got a friend that's in Philly who's um, all hyped up that Mr. Watson is going to go to Philadelphia. He, they're, 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 they're all... They're all Figuring they're going all in in Philly. Some fans are. Some Philly fans are. I don't know if it's true. I see some of the reports and some of the Philly uh, news outlets. So, but uh, Kelvin Benjamin and Joe Judge. I find it interesting, of course, that basically Kelvin Benjamin's been out of the league since 2018. He's basically been laying around, having a good time, enjoying his retirement at a young age. I think he's like what 28, 29. I can't remember off the top of my head. Then he gets a call from Dave Gettleman to come into giant camp. Come on in the giant camp. We, you know, we need a body, a wide receiver, maybe a body, a tight end. And he gets to camp or he gets to mini camp. And, you know, he meets with Joe Judge, meets with staff, goes through the drills. Everything seems fine. Giants signed him to a contract. Joe Judge asks him to go lose some weight. He came into camp at two, a uh, mini camp at 265. Uh, Judge wanted him down to 251. He evidently showed up at training camp at 268. Joe Judge came over and told him that he was going to be fined. For being overweight, I guess a disagreement ensued, and that was the end of that. He basically, you know, that, that was basically, yeah, basically Judge got, uh, it sounds from the reports that Judge got rid of him. Gellman backed up his coach, even though he brought in this player. And then, of course, Mr. Benjamin goes out and bashes Joe Judge, saying that uh, he doesn't know how to communicate. You know, he's never going to be, he's never going to be a winning head coach. In this league, he's never going to take the Giants to the Super Bowl or the playoffs. All the things that you would normally think would be sour grapes from a player who just got cut the first day during warmups in training camp. It is a little peculiar, though. It is it is a little strange to me that that would happen. It does sound like kind of Joe Judge had a um, had a disinterest in this player that he was not on board with him coming in. He was not on the same page with the general manager. That's what just what it sounds like. And the player at the end of the day took the brunt of Joe Judge, didn't get backed up by Gettleman, and then got unceremoniously released. I don't think there was ever going to be an opportunity for him really to make the team, so it doesn't really matter. I just think it's just, it's again, it's just bad optics from a Giants perspective. And a lot of times, especially now in this league and, you know, everything else, optics is everything. But, you know, we're, we're not going to, uh, you know, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not going to give credence his exact coach is he's not a coach that could ever win a Super Bowl. And of course, this is a guy that's never won a Super Bowl anyway. So, I mean, he, it is it is what it is. Some of the standouts that they were reporting in camp yesterday were, of course, were Dory Jackson. He said evidently he broke up numerous pass plays. He's joining, of course, an already deep secondary, forcing interceptions as well with the Giants as they worked heavily in the red zone. Mr. Darius Slayton caught a pair of touchdown passes in the red zone. So that's, it. that's good news for us. Julian Love showed his all-around versatility. He broke up a handful of passes on a strong day for the group. These, the defensive backs are always going to be ahead of the wide receivers, I, I always think, in beginning to camp. I really do. So it, it, it's, it's good. It's day one. It's camp one. Does it mean anything? No. It's day one. <laughs> it's day one of, like, day, what, 62. <laughs> so, I mean... Let's get that first preseason game over with. And then we can start talking about what players are shining in camp. And then certain players are going to get better against certain players in camp because you go against them repetitively. Anyone who's ever been in a camp beyond high school, such as myself, will tell you, you, you get to learn people's tendencies at a higher level. So it, the repetitive nature against going up against the same players allows other players to gain an advantage over that player. So I, I always take everything with a grain of salt until you get into the actual physical preseason games. So we'll have to just wait and see. Deshaun Watson, though, I wanted to talk about him because there's rumors coming out of Philly that the Eagles, the Eagles, are going to make a big push for Watson. Now Jalen Hurts is like, I don't know what rumors you're talking about. Never even heard of these rumors. What chatter? So there's a lot of chatter about him going to Philadelphia. Harry Roseman is, they've been monitoring this on watching situation as a team looks to chart a path forward at quarterback after shipping Carson Wentz to Indianapolis, they were saying. 
So Jalen Hurts is like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. What, what chatter is that? Would he be? Would it be bad if he went to Philadelphia? Oh God, yeah. You, you talk about how Daniel Jones didn't have the weapons, and Daniel Jones didn't have this, and Daniel Jones was on a bad team, and Daniel Jones had a bad offensive line. All those things can be added to the name Deshaun Watson. And the kid basically still, and he was on a 4-12 and team, he still completed 70% of his passes for 4,823 yards, 33 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. What? <laughs> He, and he did not have a plethora of talent around him either on a 4-12 and team. Just throwing that out there. He has an immense talent. He is an immense talent. Now, the whole situation with what's going on with all these women, that's an interesting, that's an interesting dichotomy. I think you have 21 civil suits, and I think there's still two, uh, two criminal lawsuits, and the criminal investigations pending. The league has not investigated either, and I find it interesting that um, – Ezekiel Elliott and Big Ben both got suspended for what eight games for for similar situations, and they weren't even charged. So you figure there's got to be some kind of suspension coming down for Deshaun Watson. But can we keep? Should we keep him out of Philadelphia? The Giants did not make that trade down this year because of the fact that they they didn't think there was any other talented player than Tony. They made that trade down to gather assets. And the reason that you can, you can extrapolate for that is the fact that they, they were concerned about Daniel Jones. You don't take, get two first-rounders in the following draft if you're not cons- and with the third year co- going into the season with a third-year quarterback who has question marks without backing some kind of backup plan up. That's just the way NFL franchises are. A lot of times players, you know, I always talk about, especially with the Giants, you need immediate talent. And Giants went for what I refer to as talent, down the road talent, which is fine. Down the road talent is fine if you're a winning team. If you're a team that's been bad for 10 years, you, you need to get some you need to get some immediate talent. And what's happening with the Giants is they're they're hedging their bet that Daniel Jones will be the quarterback. Because if it's not, you got two draft choices next year. You can trade up. You can go after another quarterback, and you can get rid of Daniel Jones because you'll be in the fourth year in a contract. It'd be more team friendly to get rid of him. I always said there was last year there was what twelve and a half reasons, and this year there's twenty eight and a half million reasons why they're not going to get rid of Daniel Jones. But if you could have the potential to go out and get Deshaun Watson, if you're the Giants and you have the extra draft capital, why not? Why not? I don't care about damaging the psyche of Daniel Jones. Deshaun Watson is head and shoulders above Daniel Jones. If you truly are pushing all your chips into the middle of the table, if you truly are saying the 2021 Giants are going to make a playoff push and a Super Bowl push, why wouldn't you go get a veteran quarterback, a young veteran quarterback? Yes, he does have problems off the field, but his talent is immense and bring him in. Now, there are some things that will stop this from happening. Number one will be the salary cap. I mean, the Giants right now, according to their own capologists, are going to be have to make difficult decisions in 2022. And we're pretty close and we're, we're razor thin on the salary cap right now. So you would have to dis, you would have to extend Deshaun Watson's contract at least two years and renegotiate the first two years of his contract because we have a ton of cap space in 2023. I think he would probably do that just to get out of you know, just get out of Houston. So that's going to be your first. That's going to be your first big issue. The second big issue is going to be the fact that you don't know what his legal troubles are. You're going to have to have some reassurances from the league that he's going to be around. You know, at least at least you know most of the season, because of the fact that you're not going to trade for a guy that's automatically going to get suspended. So that that's an, that's another. You would need some kind of assurances from the league that he's going to be around at least you know for the majority of the season. And then the other issue is going to be compensation. But compensation to me is if they're always saying that they're, the Houston's looking for multiple draft choices, uh, a young quarterback, and maybe another player. So why can't we give them the two for first rounders for next year, Daniel Jones, and try to add in maybe a safety or a defensive back? Why not? I'm not giving up Xavier McKinney. But there are some guys on this team that we could probably send over. And I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm not, I don't, don't sit there and start 
saying, oh, uh, you, you hate Daniel Jones after one practice. No, I don't hate Daniel Jones after one practice. What I'm saying is, though, if you truly are the New York Giants, you truly are pushing all your chips to the middle of the table, and this is your season, why not put the best players on the field to give you the opportunity to win the game? And if I had a choice between Deshaun Watson and Daniel Jones, I am picking Deshaun Watson 99% of the time. And the other 1% of the time would be if he still cannot get over his legal issues. Just saying. Just throw, just throwing that out there. I know it's not going to happen, but also you want to keep him out of Philadelphia because I do not want to see Deshaun Watson twice a year. That is something I that I do not want to see. And that Howie Roseman, man, I don't know how Howie Roseman does it, but he he gets the players, he gets them under contract, and he gets them. He, he somehow, even with salary cap issues, still finds a way to do it. Now, of course, this is a guy that's thrown for over 14,000 yards in, what, 54 games, 104 touchdowns, 36 interceptions. Would he be an upgrade over, quarter, over our current quarterback situation? Uh, yeah. And for Giant fans that are sitting there and saying, well, no, he's not. Daniel Jones is better. You need to go watch some film. <laughs> you need to go watch some Deshaun Watson film and tell me who's better than who's better. I mean, think about it. And he's only been in the league for four years. And he's got three Pro Bowls in a row in four years. And he actually progressed from season one to two. His first season, he had 19 and eight interceptions. He has 26 and nine and over 4,000 yards. He stepped back a little bit in year three, but then had a big jump in year four. So there's been a progression. And he's, he's shown that he could be a winning quarterback, 11 wins, 10 wins. In a four-year career, he's won 28 games. And he's beaten teams with winning records. I know it's not going to happen, but I'm just saying if you truly are pushing all your chips into the middle of the table, if you are Dave Gellman, you're trying to save your job, you built up the draft capital, why not take a shot at a quarterback who could really move your team forward? Imagine Deshaun Watson with Kenny G, Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, a healthy Saquon Barkley. Got Kyle Rudolph out there. You bring in Tony, Darius Slayton. Imagine what he could do with the offensive talent around him. I just imagine, and he's, I'm not going to say he's a scrambler, but he, is, he has more pocket presence than Daniel Jones. He's not a guy that's going to, you know, like I said, he's not a guy that's going to, he's got, he's, you know, he's got great fluidity in the pocket. Deshaun Watson, that is. And he can run. I shouldn't say, I'm not, I should say he's more of a scrambler than what I would refer to as a running quarterback. And people are going to say, well, Tim, he's run for 1,600 yards in four years with 17 touchdowns. There's a difference between a running quarterback and a scrambler. A lot of times he was running to save his life because <laughs> there were some bad offensive lines. Zach Fulton was on one of those lines. So I think he's more of a scrambling quarterback than a running quarterback. He's, he fits more in the Fran Tarkenton mode to me than he does in the Steve Young mode. I'm just saying, just throwing that out there. We'll have more camp news at the end of today, or we'll try to do a video at 5 o'clock. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll figure it out. But again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talking there, Tim. And as always, if you could like, you can subscribe. If you're going to play you know what that means, that'd be awesome.